Yeah, I'm not sure we can ask what it actually does. We ask that of people. Oh, he's here. He's here. He, he, there's somebody here to speak to oh, okay. Good evening and welcome to the regular council meeting of Monday, May 20th. If we could have Councillor Latina please lead us in the pledge. Thank you. Would the town, um, the town clerk, please take attendance? Council uh, Bretman here. Councilor uh, Flores may be late. Councilor Hurley here. Councilor Urshana here. Councilor Lesser here. Uh, Councilor Rowe is unable to attend. Councilor Spinella here. Uh, Deputy Mayor Martino is unable to attend, and Mayor Lorenzo here. Thank you. As I dig through my. I was looking for a pen. <laughs> okay, we're going to begin this evening with a proclamation for National Bike and Walk Month. Um, we have a couple members of the committee in the audience. If they'd like to come up, receive the proclamation. There's a bunch of them. I hope they're walking. We won't ask you if you walked or biked here. <laughs> We should ask? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, whereas for more than a century, the bicycle has been an important part of the lives of most Americans. And whereas today, millions of Americans engage in bicycling as an environmentally sound form of transportation, an excellent form of fitness, and provides quality family recreation. And whereas the education of cyclists and motorists as to the proper and safe operation of bicycles is important to ensure the safety and comfort of all users. And whereas the League of American Bicyclists and Independent Cyclists throughout our state are promoting greater public awareness of bicycle operation and safety education in an effort to reduce accidents, injuries, and fatalities. And whereas the town of Wethersfield recognizes the health benefits of walking and the social and economic benefits of a safe walking community, and whereas the town of Wethersfield, through groups like Bike Walk Wethersfield, Safe Routes to Schools, Central Connecticut Health District, Bicycle and Pedestrian Stakeholders Advisory Committee, and others are striving to make our community more bicycle and pedestrian friendly through events such as Bike and Walk to School Day, Bike to Work Day, Mayor's Bike and Walk, the Bike Fest, and Step into Summer Competition. Now, therefore, on behalf of the Town Council, I, Amy Morinbello, Mayor of the Town of Wethersfield, do hereby deem the month of May as Bike and Walk Month in Wethersfield and commend its observation to all citizens. In witness whereof, I hereunto set my hand and cause the seal of the Town of Wethersfield to be affixed this sixth day of May, 2019. Oh, you were supposed to come to the last meeting. We <laughs> postponed it. Um, signed, Amy Morinbello. So thank you, and here's your proclamation. And would you like to say a few words? Sure. Okay. Here you go, Kevin. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kevin Sullivan, 79 Wright Road. I'm part of Bike Walk Weathersfield, and we're very pleased to accept this in honor of Biking and Walking Month, uh, both in Weathersfield and celebrated nationally as well. Um, we have a wonderful uh, biking and Pedestrian Advisory Committee that's in motion right now putting together a master plan for the town and we've had wonderful support from the mayor, the town council, uh, Parks and Rec, town engineer, uh, all across the town including residents who are very pleased about that activity and looking forward to adoption of that plan in the coming months. Uh, if I can have another minute to make a quick plug for a couple of upcoming events. Um, uh, June 1st, we have, um, what is June 1st? June 1st. No, there's something before that. June 2nd is the, the trail stay walk. We'll go back to you on June 1st. Uh, June 9th, the mayor will be participating in our, our second annual bike or walk day, and that'll be launched from uh, Henmer School, where there's also a, the annual bike festival. So look for more information that probably be at 10 in the morning. 
Uh, also coming up in July, there'll be the Keeney Coolers that are run by the Historical Society will be having free uh, bicycle uh, parking and safety check. And that brings me back to June 1st is the fireworks, of course. Everyone should have jumped up and said, hey, fireworks. Um, we'll be there doing the uh, bicycle parking and free safety check as well. So bring your bike along and we'll check it out for you. And thank you again for the support. Thank you. Do you want to introduce the rest of your committee? Uh, along with us as members of the uh, Bicycling and Pedestrian Advisory Committee are Rob O'Connor, Lynn Ofori, and Janice DeRoberts. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. Next, we have hearings. We have none this evening, so we will move into general comments. Members of the public have five minutes to speak. Uh, please state your name and address. Mr. Newell. <coughs> My name is Rick Newell. I live on Knott Street in Wethersfield. I'm the Memorial Day Parade Chairman, and I also serve on the Veterans uh, Committee. This year, our main speaker is Mark Arantano. He's written several books. He's from Wethersfield. And we are honoring a Gold Star person and the Blue Star families from Middle, uh, Middletown are going to march in the parade. Uh, Mary's going to present a plaque to the family, and I'm going to present a plaque to uh, the Gold Star uh, survivor. Uh, it's the niece of a man who... Uh, Lost his life in World War II from Wethersfield. He was killed on Pelawa Islands in World War II. And it's his niece, and she was when she found out, she was very honored that we were doing this. And also, we had two uh, SA recipients this year. Uh, the John Cassio uh, is the SA chairman, and both of them were really good. So we picked two people. I'm, I'm not sure, can I announce them, or I don't maybe know. not? Let's no. not. Let's keep okay. <laughs> all right, because I called to congratulate them. But oh, yeah. all right. Thank you. That's all I have. Thanks so much. So the Memorial Day Parade is this Saturday, Saturday. at 9 a.m., kicking off at the Motor Vehicle Department. Right. Followed and, uh, by the cemetery right. program. Right. And then after that, the uh, Historical Society would like us to go to the Key Memorial for a presentation there. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak this evening? Come on up, Mr. Mazzarella. Good evening. Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walcott Hill Road. I have uh, a couple items on tonight's agenda kind of questions, maybe <clears throat> we could get some clarification during the discussion tonight. Uh, the first is the uh, safety uh, security film that you're going to put on some of the school buildings. <clears throat> I noticed it's talking about film and caulking in the, in the quote. I don't see where the caulking's defined really of what they're doing with the caulking. Are we caulking the windows? Like, are we getting into a potential environmental issue of bad caulking? Or I hope not. <laughs> or are we trying to seal the film to the edge of the window? Um, I noticed in one of the proposals, they talk about the film not completely covering the window so that there's a gap all the way around the edge. I'm not sure if you're talking about caulking that. Uh, but it does say that the manufacturer wants to have that gap there to uh, eliminate moisture and uh, allow for movement of the film. The other thing is it, uh, one of the proposals talks about removing the existing film on web. So I was curious, are we replacing film that's already on the windows? If so, maybe we could get a little information about why. <clears throat> we're, we're having to replace it. Uh, the next item that I wanted to mention was the uh, uh, 
audits on the town and Board of Ed side. And I noticed that we're going to be spending $34,000 on the town budget audit or the town side audit and 20000 on the Board of Ed side. I'm questioning why we're only spending 20000 on the Board of Ed when, in my opinion, there's more likely problems on that side of the budget, the operations, than on the town side. Um, I believe you're limited as to what you can audit on the board side. And I'm not sure what the acronym is, but it says EFS <coughs> agreed upon procedures for the Board of Ed. Maybe we could hear a little bit about what our limitations are for investigating the Board of Ed's finances. Um, I have particular interest about this student activity fund that they have that's an off off-ledger account, I believe it's allowed by law, but I'm questioning some of the movement of money between taxpayer dollars in the Board of Ed budget, and it's getting transferred into that student activity fund, and it's paying, in some cases, for uh, stipends for coaches uh, that are included in the Board of Ed budget that I'm assuming our taxpayer dollars were earmarked for those stipends. That's what it was in their budget. So I'm questioning why it's being paid out of the student activity fund. We're, I also see money going back and forth. And, you know, I'm not an accountant. I'm not a <coughs> financial auditor. So I may be speaking out of turn, but I think there's a lot of questions that should be answered. And for $20,000, I don't think they're going to be doing very much investigation of, of that. So uh, something to maybe consider or do a little further investigation. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak this evening? Mr. Young? Uh, good evening, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. Uh, I, I too noticed that the Blum Shapiro uh, contract was coming up, and I thought $54,000 was a lot of money for what they provide. Um, I also realize and have asked for information from our finance director to get information from Blum Shapiro, and it was a zero response. And I was asking for information on that non-town cash account using the town's federal ID. Um, in that case, we had organizations using the federal ID number to do whatever they're going to do. And I think that's criminal. I think that's outrageous that an organization could use your ID number to go buy stuff and not pay taxes and also not to report any revenues. So, I, th I don't think you should use Blum Shapiro anymore. As a matter of fact, every couple of years you should change the, the account accounting firm because it's, it's good. It helps clean, <clears throat> clean and find new items that they continue to miss by bringing in somebody new. Um, I don't believe that student activity fund either is audited. All they do is they take the beginning number and they take the last number and they make sure it's over there in the general ledger of the town, from what I understand. And there is a lot of expenditures going, a lot of dollars going between the town's general ledger or the BOE to that other ledger, back and forth. And stipends are being paid for coaches and money is going elsewhere to pay these coaches so they don't have to pay benefits. So it's a roundabout way of doing their kind of business, which I call is not very honest. So anyway, tonight I came here really to talk about uh, the March, I'm sorry, the May 14th meeting that you held on the budget. Um, it was very, um, 
uh, how could I put it? Not a good event to see that we're having a 3.5% increase in our taxes. I think that you had, from what I recall, you had $7 million being transferred from the BOE to the town side. Yet in the end, the town side, the, the BOE is only reporting a negative where they should have been, have been reporting the seven million. <clears throat> they only reported 1.5 million or there or abouts, which shows that there's a lot of burying that went on in there. I know, because I can see it. You know it, because you're taking care of them. Now, one little issue. Not long ago, Chromebooks were going to be bought by using uh, lease payments. And of course, now the school board decided, let's pay that lease off or whatever. And, and that was just another sneaky way of getting, getting some extra money out of, out of the citizens. They got their Chromebooks. They got them paid. I think they're going to buy more out of all of that because of this shifting of money, shifting by shifty people. And we do have a lot of shifty people. Now, there was also, like I say, 3.5%. Mr. Forrest, who's not here tonight, and I don't really care to talk about him tonight because he's not here. But, you know, he did talk about, oh, it was only a $7, $7 increase on an average house. But we're in revaluation. Everything is, in, is, is moving different ways. Some people are getting a little less off on their assessed value. Others are getting hit with more assessed value. And that $7 on the average might be true. I don't know, because I didn't even, even want to go there. But the fact remains, a tremendous amount of people have houses that were going up in value. I, for one. $7 is going to be a heck of a lot, and to me, is going to be hundreds of dollars. And I'm not happy about that. I come down here and I try to impose on you or instill on you that we need to cut our costs. Instead, you keep rising the costs. Rising the cost as far as you're out there buying things that you can't afford. Your You're time living is way up, beyond Mr. your Young, means. Please I'll, I'll wrap, wrap up. it up. You're living way beyond your means. You're, you're every, things you're buying on lease, and, and, and you don't care. And I guess mm -hmm. because of my time is up, I'll have to come back. Thank you. And yes, ma'am, and I will be back. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak this evening? Anybody else who'd like to speak? Okay, we'll declare the public comment section closed. We'll move into council reports. Are there any council members who have reports to make? Councilor Hurley? Um, from the last rec board meeting, it all has to do with the, the rain that's coming down. Um, it's raining? Some, yeah. There are some s issues with sports fields. There's people complaining, but that happens every year. I think it just rained a little more this year, so... There's a few more complaints, and there's only really one field that people can use, which is uh, the turf field at the high school, and it's hard. Kathy's doing a good job trying to get everybody the fields that they need. And then the construction of the boat ramp, same thing. The water was high. Um, there will be some disruption to the people who buy um, the boats, who leave their boats in the cove, because they won't be able to put their dinghies on the... Uh, the dock because it's too close to the construction zone so Kathy's doing something for them too. Okay, okay. thank you. Mm -hmm. Councilor Lesser. Thank you Mayor. I have two things. Uh, first I attended the Chamber uh, meeting in May and they went through all the activities that the Chamber's doing and they just had two activities last week. One was the second annual Best of Weathersfield Business Awards night that was last Wednesday I think. And that was a great evening to honor the, the best uh, businesses in different categories uh, in Weathersfield. And the second one was uh, yesterday was the car show, which I know the mayor was there. 
her car, her husband's car. Um, not my car. <laughs> Mr. Mazzarella's truck was there, and it was a it was a nice day to walk around and see all the great cars and trucks that are antiques. And it's a nice event by the chamber. And lastly, their next event is July first, which is the fireworks, which is always June first. Oh, June first. Sorry, good. Someone correct me. <laughs> June first. Uh, and the second thing is the Veterans Committee. We met uh, last week, and I've said this a few times, but we're gearing up for the June sixth, seventy fifth. I think I got that date right. June 6th, 75th anniversary of D-Day, where there'll be a, uh, a celebration on the high school. It's open to the high school field, all high school students. It's open to the entire community. We will have World War II veterans from Wethersfield and veterans from throughout the state there. It's going to be a great morning and a real uh, important ceremony for the town. And lastly, we talked about ways that we can engage veterans after this event and what we can focus on. And we're talking about doing some coffees for veterans and trying to get their input and find out what their needs are. So the Veterans Committee is very active, but we hope the public can go June 6th. And George Rue texted me at the beginning. He's going to be helping, begin this meeting, helping out on June 6th, but he didn't, he said he couldn't hear. So George, I hope you can hear us while we're speaking. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. You. Thank you. Anybody else have, um Council reports for this evening. Okay, we'll move into council comments. Any council members have comments? Councilor Hurley. Thank you. Um, just a quick comment on tolls. Um, tolls will be bad for Connecticut, but they're going to be worse for Weathersfield. We have two. Um, we have the South Scene Highway and the Berlin Turnpike. People are going to funnel off the highways and use those to go in. It's going to cause a lot of lot more traffic in Weathersfield. Just wanted to put that on the record. Thank you. Any other council comments? Well, I'll comment that today I noticed stop signs are up at train crossings. Um, I went down Knott Street and Church Street, and there were um, there were signs in, wrapped up. And today the wrapping is off, and there are stop signs. So. When you're traveling in different areas, make sure that you are paying attention. Um, when you're approaching the train tracks, I believe, I'm not sure if all the, are they all gonna be stop signs or will be yield signs as well? I'm sorry, I'm putting you on the spot, Derek. I've only been on two of the roads, so I've only seen stop signs. All the local road crossings are going to be stop signs, with the one exception is there'll be a yield sign heading uh, eastbound on Wells Road away from Silas Dean Highway. That is our only yield um, because DOT had evaluated sight lines and determined they were sufficient enough to put a yield there. The rest of the locations, they felt the sight line wasn't long enough to allow for a yield, so there'll be stop signs. Okay, and when will the, um, the arms start working on, uh, on Maple Street Route 3? Those are active and they are operational, so they, they'll be so working. the first time the train comes down is the first time they'll go down? Yes. Okay, very good. Thank you. Um, I would like to also thank and congratulate the Chamber of Commerce for the two great events. This past week I attended the Best of Weathersfield and the Car Show. Both events were great. Um, the, the dinner had over 165 um, attendees at Weathersfield Country Club and the car show, uh, the weather was great and there were a bunch of cars and a, a bunch of people there. So two great events this week in town. Um, if there are no other council comments, we'll move to town manager's report. Thank you, Mayor and honorable council members. Uh, I'll run through this very quickly. There might be a little bit of duplication, but uh, Memorial Day Parade, reminder, Saturday, May 25th, beginning at 9. We already spoke about that. Um, even though it is a holiday weekend, the transfer station will be open as usual, regular hours. However, as a reminder, Paynes will be uh, shifting their normal pickup schedule by one day this week due to the holiday. Uh, as you just mentioned, the train will be starting, and Derek, thank you very much for um, the information. June 3rd is still being considered the official start date. There are stop and that yield, uh, isolated yield sign that is up. They took the bags off, I think, officially today. So those are official, they are live. There's a number of outreach events that are gonna take place uh, beginning tomorrow morning, weather permitting. If the rain continues, uh, we'll have to push them off a little bit, but between 7 and 9 a.m. Uh, starting tomorrow at the train crossing intersection of Jordan and Knott Street, there'll be members from the DOT as well as from the rail available and handing out um, cards and informational flyers to any drivers that are 
going back and forth or pedestrians going back and forth over the train crossing on May 22nd, so that would be Wednesday, they'll be at Church and Wells Road, as well as on May 23rd, Maple and Mill Street. So uh, they will be handing it out. Um, we ask that people be cautious as they drive through, so they, uh, we will have trucks there with lights as well as some um, uh, cones up to at least slow people down coming through. But you wanna provide some more? Yeah, I just wanted to add to that. I found out late this afternoon that the railroad company is planning to hold their own events uh, in the afternoon during afternoon rush hour at these locations. Um, so DOT and the railroad will be there in the morning, uh, as Gary said, from 7 to 9. Um, the railroad company themselves want to hold additional events during the afternoon rush hours the same days at the same locations. So they'll be there 3 to 5 is the plan. That's great, because I was going to ask about why there weren't afternoon shifts. Um, is there any cost to the town for this? At this point, I believe it's being absorbed. The only thing we're providing are some vehicles with flashing lights and some sawhorses to, for protection. Thank you. Uh, other things, and well, yeah, we'll let Derek sit. But uh, general paving has started drainage work for the spring paving program, and uh, the reclamation and paving is currently scheduled to begin May 28th, so... Uh, shortly next week uh, just notice and it's coming in the future but the pools will be officially open on Monday June 17th starting at 1 p.m. both Mill Woods and Willard fireworks were already mentioned again come bring the family enjoy the fun for Saturday June 1st and for those of you who were able to go to bed on the first early enough you can wake up and do the keen run on June 2nd <laughs> it's a busy weekend for Kathy and your crew <laughs> oh yeah and, um, and thank you very much for noting that they are working their best, uh, doing their best to maintain the fields. Uh, there was opening day, which was rescheduled from April, uh, which took place in May. It was a great event, good turnout. I think it was the first sunny day that we had where it wasn't interrupted by rain. So, and her crew, as well as Sally's crew, were out there uh, making sure that, um, that it was a, a, a great day with uh, the lawn cut as short as it possibly could be. And just lastly, the summer hours are upon us for City Hall. This is something we've done in the past. Effective June 17th, uh, Town Hall, in an effort to, among other things, save energy, uh, will begin their summer hours. So we'll be open late on Thursday night until 6 p.m. and then closing early at 1 p.m. on Friday. And that will last from June 17th until August 23rd. And that is all I have. Thank you. Um, does the town clerk have anything to report? Yes, they're coming up to June, which is a annual dog uh, registration statewide. So everybody should know that your dogs have to be registered in our office. Thank you. Okay, we will move into council action. Acceptance of resignations from boards and commissions. I believe we have one. Um, yeah, move for the resignation of Jen Jennifer Algers from the Veterans Commission effective April 8th, 2019, and Kathy Liverman from Senior Citizens Advisory Committee effective May 30th, 2019. Okay, do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, next, we have appointments to boards and commissions. Yeah, we have an appointment to the Historic District Commission, Claire Mead, 373 Main Street, 5-2019 to 6 23 Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any, any um, opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, we have no, we have no um, ordinances or resolutions for approval. We have no unfinished business. We'll move into other business, the Keene Foundation grant. Do I have a motion? Yes, Mayor. I move to authorize the town manager to apply for and accept the Keene Foundation grant to support the intramural and tutoring program, program at the Silas Dean Middle School for $11,300 for the 2019-20 school year. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. 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 <laughs> wow, lots of seconds. seconds. <laughs> okay. Um, Erica, are you here to speak on this? Welcome. Good evening, Mayor, Town Council members, and Town Manager. 
Um, we are lucky uh, again this year to be able to apply for the um, intramural grant through the Keene Foundation. We've had a great collaboration uh, with the Keene Foundation supporting um, after school intramural program and tutoring program at the um, Silas Dean Middle School right next door. Um, and we look forward to doing it again for next year. Thank you. Are there any council questions? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, next, we have the dial a ride expansion grant. Do we have a motion? Make a motion to authorize the town manager to apply for and accept a state matching grant program for elderly and disabled demand responsive transportation dial a ride grant, expansion grant, in the amount of $31,733 for Wethersfield and $89,436 total and to sign a memorandum of understanding with the towns of Newington and Rocky Hill to provide a Tri-Town Medical Transportation Service. Thank you, do I have a second? Second. Okay, Eric, are you speaking to this as well? I am. Okay. Um, I'm here tonight for the acceptance of the dial a ride expansion grant. This is a great service um, to seniors and disabled here in Weathersfield. And this um, is additional services to the already um, funded dial a ride service that the town contributes to. So we're able to provide medical trips um, additional days of the week and also to additional uh, towns um, for residents. Okay, are there any council questions? Councilor Forrest. Briefly, Mayor. Erica, did you apply, were you the group that applied for this grant or is it like a block grant or? So um, Weathersfield, Newington and Rocky Hill, we applied together as a collaboration. Weathersfield is the administrator of the grant. So we, we put in for all three towns. Congratulations on nice work. Yeah, thanks. It's actually worked out very well. Thank you, anything else? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Next we move into bids. We have a bid for the Charles Wright School play area improvements. Do we have a motion? Move to award a contract to the lowest responsible bidder, New England Blacktop Incorporated from Glastonbury, Connecticut, in an amount of $95,005.25 to replace the paved basketball court and play area surfaces and installation of outdoor basketball systems, painted pavement markings, and curbing at the rear of Charles Wright Elementary School. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. I see Derek's up at the podium already. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the council. My name is Derek Gregor. I'm the town engineer. I'm um, here tonight uh, to present a uh, project uh, for approval. Uh, as you may know, uh, we have some play, uh, paved play area and basketball courts at the rear of Charles Wright School that are in very poor condition. Pavement's very cracked. Um, it's really a safety hazard for the students at the school as well as any residents that use these areas for recreation. The de pavement's deteriorated too far for a crack ceiling uh, repair, so we're in a, at a point where we need to do a more substantial repair. So the project will include removing and replacing the existing pavement in the play area, the adjoining sidewalks, and also for the entire basketball court. Um, as part of that, we're going to put in some new concrete curb around the play area that's out there now where the mulch is. Um, historically, the, uh, we have some um, parking bumpers that are there, but they get moved around a lot with the plowing, so we're just going to put in some concrete curb so it's more stable and we have less of a trip hazard out there uh, in the future. It will include some new, two new basketball uh, hoop systems and also a line striping for uh, different games that the principal was interested in having available to the kids like hopscotch, four squares, some of those uh, were worked into the, into the project uh, as well as new painting for the basketball court. The work's scheduled to start right after school ends um, so they can get it done, probably a two or three week project. So it'll be done in plenty of time before our school resumes. Uh, we did put it out to bid, the low bid was New England Black Tap, Black Tap, incorporated out of Glastonbury. Um, they came with very good references. Uh, they have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. Um, you know, based on our evaluation of them and the price they came in was within our budget. Um, staff's recommending a word to them for the work. Thank you. Is this the project that we tried to bid out last year that was too expensive, so that's why it got delayed a year? 
Yeah, when we had got the funds available uh, last year's budget for fiscal year 19, we put mm -hmm. the project out to bid right away. It was a late bid in the season, so we weren't sure what we were going to get. We ended up with one bidder. They were high, and we opted at that point. Let's you know pull back. Um, we actually had our physical services crew do some of the work, which reduced the scope. Um, and then we put it out again this year at a more <coughs> timely uh, time of year where we got mm -hmm. better results. I'm glad to hear that. Are there any council questions? Councilor Lesser. Thank you, Mayor. De Derek, I was just uh, the phrase, just wanted to question you about the phrase outdoor basketball systems. I never really heard that before. <laughs> is that a hoop? That's a nice way of saying, is that to put hoops in or is, or is there more, is there an electronic scoreboard or something? I didn't know what the outdoor <laughs> basketball system was. It's just a fancy way of saying two basketball hoops. That's yes. what I thought. Thank you. <laughs> I was waiting for more. Anything else? Councillor Forrest. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Derek. <laughs> A great comment. I, I love that question. It was fancy. Um, yeah. The PTO there, I believe, is um, also planning a playscape. Uh, that's, they're raising funds for it. I was just seeing how this particular. Are we sure that this particular setup and the work that you're going to do is going to integrate with some of the plans that the school has related to upgrades to the playscaping area? Yeah, I have heard about some of that um, swings they've been looking at. Uh, as far as what we're doing, we're basically replacing what's out there now. Um, the limits change a few feet here or there, but we're really not doing anything new. So it's more of a replacement of what's out there. So I don't anticipate this would have any impact on what they're proposing. Have you talked? Have you talked to them? And they said it was they're they're okay with that. Yeah, I believe several members have actually asked me whether uh, when we were moving forward with this component yes. first. So. But if Kathy wants to elaborate, sure. but several of them have been pushing specifically for this. Yes, this is this has been first on the list. Just getting the basketball court and the paved area to get that done. Um, they're not, to my knowledge, they're not talking about a whole playscape. They're talking about a swing set. So I may have to double check with them if you've heard a, a playscape. I've not heard that. I don't want to misspeak regarding the scope of what they're planning. I do know that they're raising. I mean, what I would call a significant amount of money. I don't know, maybe like fifteen thousand dollars, something like that, for some type of, for some type of. Maybe it's a swing set. Maybe it's a group of swing sets or whatever. Some type of playground. Um, so I just didn't want to make sure that we're not going ahead with work, or when we do go ahead with work, that there's at least some coordination there. So playing Monday, so we don't have to play Monday morning quarterback and say, oh well, if we had just done this, if we had just done that, that at least it was a discussion. And I know that they're really thrilled to get this work done, and they're really anticipating it. So if we could just ensure that before we do something uh, that there's a conversation, that would be, I think, wise. That's yeah, no, I can definitely double check with them. $15,000 does not, per it's not uh, the cost of a playscape. It would be a cost of a swing set or something like that. Okay. Unfortunately, commercial, uh, our commercial equipment is much more expensive, but we'll double check just to make sure. I'm not totally sure that the $15,000 is the right number. Oh, I just okay. <laughs> So I just think that they're planning on some stuff. It'd be nice to make sure that we don't um, get into a situation where something was done that wasn't maybe anticipated. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing is, uh, just because this is something that the school has been anticipating, uh, it might be nice to at least, you know, t let's certainly tell the superintendent that we're trying to move forward with it, but also let them know the sort of timing of the scope of work. I'm sure that people will have uh, a lot of discussion. Like I heard it was maybe, if it, if it does get approved as town council, what did that timing look like? And there's going to be a positive reaction to that, you know, some positive work's going to be done that they've been waiting for for a long time. So perhaps let the superintendent know so that he can let the parents and, so, and the, the community know. Sure, we can do that. We've been in direct contact with the principal and the superintendent about the project. Once council was going to award, then we were going to make the, let them know officially that it's moving forward, certainly. Sure. Nice job again. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, we have school security film bid. Do we have a motion? I make a motion to award a contract in the amount of $56,671 to layer, I guess it is, mm -hmm. for the installation of security window film at Webb Charles Wright and Hamner schools. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Sally, welcome. Welcome, thank you. Um, this is a project that we inherited as part of the transition from uh, maintenance and operations, being with the Board of Education and coming over to physical services. 
The Board of Education a number of years ago had started to investigate different types of security film to use on the windows. Uh, they started the project and ended up starting with um, Highcrest School was done. The high school was done as part of the building project. These three schools were put in for uh, the window film in the previous year's CIP budget. It was not in um, this current fiscal year, it was the previous fiscal year. Um, and um, so when that project was supposed to come to fruition, was also at the time that we had to deal with the underground storage tanks, which is what's causing the delay in moving forward with this project. Uh, the project entails putting security film um, on the windows. It is adhered to, it is installed from the interior of the buildings, which is also why it could not be done while school was in session. The way that the installation takes place, the security film is placed on the window. There is a border which is caulked. The caulk is part of the rigidity of the product. It is necessary for the product to meet the standards of the company and also that it meets the standard of the warranties that comes along mm -hmm. with the products. Each of the companies that bid on the project bid out the security film, the caulking, the installation, and the warranties. Layer came in with the same product but at the lower cost, which is why we are um, requesting that that company be awarded this project. It will still mean that there are two schools that will need to uh, be done in order to be completed. As far as web goes, when, from what I understand from when the Board of Ed was looking at different products, there were different panels put up in the schools to see how it would weather, how it would work. Those need to be taken down and put in when the whole school is done so that it would be uniform and warranted and in line with the other schools that are being done. This is a product that we use, the, the, I'm saying we now, um, started to use it in the first installation and now moving forward, continuing to use that product. And you indicated that there are still schools who this haven't, has not occurred Emerson on. Williams uh, has not been funded yet. As far as the elementaries go, yes. And the high school's done, so what high about the middle done. school? And the middle school, there are certain places, again, we need to go out. Um, I could not find any documentation on the middle school having been done, and from what we've been able to tell, the windows don't have it. But I don't, I'm not 100% on that, and so moving forward, we will investigate fully the Silas Dean Middle School, and we know that Emerson Williams had not yet been done. I was told by the Board of Education that Emerson Williams was not a part of this initial, um, of this group because work needed to be done on the doors before they could do the film. The doors were done and it was running at a time when Fred Bushy was here, so I don't have all of the uh, background information as to the exact timing of it. Okay, are there any council questions? Councilor Latino. Sally, what does this do, this film? It is a retardant <coughs> to an intrusion. It's not bulletproof. There isn't a bulletproof product. What this does, this product does, is it gains first responders time to get to the facility if there is an intrusion. It is bullet resistant. It is, you can hammer away with it literally with hammers and baseball bats or anything that would uh, an intruder would use to attempt to get into the building. And what it does is it stops that um, mechanism that the, that the intruder is trying to use to get in from infiltrating the glass. And so it's buying time for your first responders to get to that location, but it is not a bulletproof system. And on the, on the web school, I know they had issues with those windows in the past with the caulking. That's not going to disturb No, anything. this this caulking, and they use the word caulking, I would probably call it an adhesive, same mm. kind of thing. It, we are not removing caulking from around framing or anything else like that. It's a two different things. Councilor Lester. Thank you, Mayor. Sally, do you know if other towns around us are using the same security film 
Um, this product, yeah, this product is one of the most used throughout the country as far as um, the different applications. It's used in schools, it's used in commercial buildings, um, it is used in public buildings. We did research on it, and you can also, um, this particular product online has a number of different YouTube videos showing how it is a, uh, a barrier against intrusion, um, delaying the time for potential intrusion into a building. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Sorry. <laughs> okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? <coughs> Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have the selection of auditor for annual audit. I have a motion. Yes, Mayor. I move to designate Bloom Shapiro and Company PC to audit the books and accounts of the town, including the Board of Education, pursuant to the requirements of Section 719 of the char Charter, and to authorize the town manager to enter in an agreement with Bloom Shapiro and Company PC for that purpose for the fiscal year ended June 30th, 2019. Second. Okay. Sure. Town manager? Sure. Thank you, Mayor, and to the council. Uh, this is part of the town's financial governance. The town requested proposals from a number of audit firms or from audit firms to provide its annual audit services. A selection committee was formed. They reviewed the proposals and three firms in total were interviewed. Uh, at this time, we're recommending the designated Bloom Shapiro and Company to be the auditor for the town and Board of Education <coughs> per the charter. Okay. For the requirements of the charter. Uh, are there any questions or comments? I don't know if any of the council members who were um, part of the interview process want to speak. Councilor Hurley? No, I thought, yeah, they did the, a better job coming into interview when they interviewed with us. Um, I don't know. I know Tom asked some questions. I, I think we have more controls on our side. That's why they, um, it's cheaper on the Board of Ed side, even though they're bigger. I think we have more controls on our side with taxes and different things more departments, um, but I don't know exactly. I think that's why. Yeah, that's, oh, no, go ahead, it's not me. No, I was gonna say that that's a greater part of it. So it, a lot of that financial fiduciary responsibility comes into us through the tax office, the assessor's office, and, um, and the, uh, so the balance is gonna rest on us and that's the larger component of it. Um, yeah, so go ahead. Councilor Lesser. Thank you, Mayor. One of the things that impressed me is they had a person there who works for, for them who presented to us on cybersecurity. And that's a huge area of fraud potential, as I'm sure many of you are aware. And they have an expert on that, and that was very impressive. And he's going to you know, go through and be part of the audit. Uh, and that stuck out as an advantage that some of the other uh, presenters did not have. And I think that's important for us. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Any Councilor Latina? I did um, have the same question that Tom had with regard to on the Board of Ed side. Do we know whether this would encompass a look at those off accounts um, with all the different sports fees and gate receipts and all that sort of stuff? So I can find out more information. Uh, what they will do, and um, I think it might have been mentioned by one of the other speakers, it might have been Mr. Young, but they're, they're gonna look for a balance. So they're gonna look to see if something was moved on this end, was it sh does it show up on this end so that they can track the money? I don't know if they necessarily are, um, I, I don't know is the quick answer to that, but I can find out and. I would in. just, yeah, find out what the process is because if it's something that is off books, they're not necessarily gonna see it. So what would their suggestion be for us to put controls in place and how can we track yeah, it? Yeah, I'm not so sure there's anything that goes off book. No, I, I know I it's a generalized term, but do right. you know what I mean? If it's not in their actual budget, but it's these uh, these side accounts for these sports and activity groups. Right, w which would be included as part of, um, so they would have to be monitoring all of those. So they will go through every level, they will test it, they will, they will trace the money, you know, the, the idea is follow the money mm -hmm. and where it goes. So um, it would be accounted for um, in terms, and it would follow whatever our policies are that are in place. So they're gonna look to see if it follows um, typical accounting practices and if it follows our policy on how the money is treated. So if we have a policy that accepts the funding to be used in that way, then if it's within that margin, um, 
still it would be allowable. There is a question of, on the policy side of things. I think is the other side is the other uh, side of it. And again, they're looking at generally accepted accounting practices mm -hmm. um, to see if it meets GAAP. So, but again, I will follow up with Mike, who unfortunately is not here today. So, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Okay, we do have a motion in a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. We have no ordinances, resolutions, or appointments for introduction at this time. So we will move into our long list of meeting minutes. Um, the first meeting minutes are um, for approval are March 18th. Do we have a motion? Yes, Mayor. I move to approve the March 18th, 2019 regular meeting minutes. Second. Okay. Are there any um, corrections or changes to those minutes? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Aye. Sorry. I'll abstain. Okay. Next, we um, motion carries. Next, we have the April 1st workshop meeting. Do I have a motion? Move to approve the April 1st, 2019 workshop meeting. Second. Okay, are there any uh, changes to those minutes? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Uh, the April 15th budget presentation. Do I have a motion? Yes, Mayor. Move to approve April 15, 2019 budget, budget presentation minutes. Second. Okay. Are there any changes to these minutes? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Next, we have the April 22nd budget workshop. Do we have a motion? Move to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Are there any changes to these min minutes? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Next, we have the April 24th budget workshop. Do we have a motion? Move to approve the April 24th, 2019 budget workshop minutes. Second. Are there any changes to these minutes? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. The April 29th budget workshop. Move to approve. We have a second. Second. Are there any changes to these minutes? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. May 6th budget workshop. Do we have a motion? Yes, move to approve the May 6, 2019 budget workshop minutes. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Are there any changes? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. The May 8th budget workshop minutes. Do we have a motion? Move to approve. Do you have a second? Second. Are there any changes to these minutes? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Last one, uh, May 13th. Do we have a motion? Yes, thankfully, the last one. <laughs> Move to approve May 13th, 2019 budget workshop minutes. Second. Okay, are there any changes to these minutes? <coughs> Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? <coughs> motion carries. We're back to public comment. Member of the public, members of the public have five minutes. Um, please come up and state your name and address. Is there anybody who'd like to speak tonight? Rob, come on up. Good evening, members of the council. Um, Rob O'Connor, 180 Main Street. And I said uh, three things. I, I was I, we meant to mention before that um, several of us, including some members of the um, town, attended the Putnam Bridge meeting earlier in May, and it's the state of Connecticut DOT presenting their plan to um, open the Putnam Bridge to, to biking and walking, as well as have parking facilities and uh, trail facilities on the Wethersfield side, as well as the Glastonbury side. <coughs> and they're gonna do some sidewalks on the Glastonbury side, and I, we're, we're hoping to, um, to complete some sidewalk work and um, wayfinding and um, a safe passage for cyclists too from the, from the 
bridge to get to Old Wethersfield and beyond. So um, they had quite a turnout, probably like 150, 160 people in Glastonbury. And um, <clears throat> if anybody's interested, there's a document on, I think it's on the town website, but it's a commentary support or any kind of comments, negative or positive, um, that the DOT will accept until May 22nd has to be postmarked. So if anybody wants to do that, <coughs> that was sort of an official thing. I just had two things as, um, as a citizen. One, I, would, I wanted to urge the council to take a look. I know that the town sent a, a, an email out on um, taking down the sound barrier and cutting trees along 91, and then it got retracted. I think is somehow it's tied to the Charter Oak Bridge project, which I don't understand fully, but I just was hoping the council, if this is not gonna get looked at for a year, would take a look at what they're talking about doing, which is removing that whole um, sound protection barrier to take it down and remove more trees and then put a temporary th barrier up. <coughs> and I just was concerned because I remember two or three years ago when, when they talked about tree cutting in Brainerd and they discussed the sound barrier and the pollution barrier, that, that wall there that runs, I don't know how long it runs actually, but it, you can see it from 91. Yeah. It's quite a block for you know people living right along River Road and Kelly and people going to the Cove and I think all into Old Wethersfield. So. <coughs> um, number three is something I wasn't going to comment, but I, <coughs> I'm a, um, I was a former chair board for the Board of Education in South Windsor and sat in your position on tables where people came up and <coughs> mostly came up with their comments in our democracy. Um, and I've sat at some of the meetings and because I just want um, the people of the town to, to, to think about um, civil civility for the volunteers that you guys are, except for Gary, I know you get paid. <laughs> but <coughs> people assume that you're all getting paid probably. But um, I know I've seen people come up to meetings in accusatory fashion. And I think there's, there's if they think that they're modeling, they are modeling. And um, I know we have some students, I'm guessing, observing the meeting to see what, <coughs> what our democracy looks like. And I don't think it should be <coughs> throwing words like shifty or criminal or pointing. I mean, there's a way to get your, your voice out and there's a way to even, you know, argue and, def and, and ask for the budget to be defended. But I think there should just be a civil tone. And so I know that you can't say that sitting up there because I could never do it as the board chair when people pointed their finger at me, but now I can. So <laughs> I'm hoping that people might listen to that. So thank you. Thank you for the comments. And um, Gary, would you look into the Charter Oak Bridge sound barrier and tree removal because I'm not familiar with that e project either and some information for council and residents would definitely be in order. Um, is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Mr. Mazzarella? Tom Mazzarella, 600 Welka Hill. <coughs> So the audio's not going out on the. Uh, oh, are you kidding me? Tonight, so I'll just go. <laughs> <laughs> it does go out. It does go out um, on the computer most times, but it, it, we're it's working. It's not on the TV at we're my We're working house. on the t <laughs> tele. I'm sorry. We'll pause you for a minute because I'm talking. I'm using up your time. What do you have? Is it Frontier Cox. or Cox? Cox. Cox. Okay. Um, it's, it's consistently good online and <coughs> both um, Cox and Frontier we continue to experience difficulty with and we have been working with both providers. Um, it, some of it is their, their equipment in our town hall and, and restart switches and all sorts of things. Just um, thought I'd mention it. Yeah, okay. and I appreciate that and we are aware of it. Okay, okay I'm going to resume your time. Thank you. <coughs> um, now I lost my train of thought. I should get <laughs> extra five seconds. Um, you know, the guys were up here tonight on the bike and walk uh, program. Um, I've been doing a lot of walking lately. So I've uh, finally retired and uh, want to get my exercise. So I'm out there every day walking, uh, walking the sidewalks of Wethersfield. And I get to see all the deplorable sidewalks. 
I might volunteer for the sidewalk inspector. Maybe I could write them all down. So far, I've done 150 miles and I've tripped twice. Um, there's also a sidewalk that has water running across it that has moss that I didn't see. That was quite an event. I think both feet came up, but I managed to catch myself. Somebody stopped and said, you all right? Yeah, <laughs> great, Good sidewalks. Um, but the point I was going to get at is I just saw um, the city of New Britain come up with a plan of putting up some money to get some sidewalks fixed, uh, town expense. And I think, uh, I don't think it's fair the way the, the sidewalk policy is in town. Um, I have a good portion of sidewalks. They're all on town property, yet by uh, town statute I have to maintain the sidewalks replace the sidewalks, uh, remove the snow from the sidewalks, which, you know, I don't mind doing. But there's a lot of people that, uh, you know, are having trouble paying their taxes and paying them for all kinds of other things. And, you know, who has an extra 200 or $250 a slab to replace the sidewalks? Um, some of them are in horrendous condition. They really are. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. Um, but I think that's a policy that we should look into. Uh, New Britain, I think, started out with $50,000, not a lot of money. So you're talking maybe 200, 250 sidewalks could be replaced ar around the town. I haven't made it to uh, the building department, but I was going to inquire and see if there's a record of how many permits have been taken out for sidewalk replacement. I, I don't see that many being replaced. so. Uh, I think $50,000, which is not a lot of money, could go a long way. Maybe even set it up something like the facade improvement program where, you know, it's like uh, matching money or something. Or give somebody a break on their taxes or some, something. Come up with a plan. Uh, I'd like to see uh, some areas get sidewalks where they're interrupted. It's, it's, uh, it's bizarre when you're walking down the street and all of a sudden the sidewalk ends. I know I spoke once about the sidewalk at J Street to the high school. I was uh, shut down by the I agreed with you town on that. manager on that one. I've since looked at that sidewalk again and it is, I had thought it was paved, uh, bituminous pavement. No, and in it fact, it is, it is concrete. Those are actual sidewalks that are there that the grass has grown over. Uh, I took some pictures there in the winter time, and all the foot tracks through the snow go right across those sidewalks to the parking lot. There's absolutely nobody's going to walk down J Street on the east side and then back up and go down someone's driveway to get across the street. It's bizarre. So you're talking about uh, probably 40 feet of sidewalk. I don't think we're talking about a lot of money. Maybe we could look into uh, town staff doing some of the work. We have a, a mason, I believe, on staff. I can't imagine it's that hard to excavate a, a, a few sidewalk slabs and put a couple forms up and pour some sidewalks. I'll be glad to help. I have nothing else to do. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, come on up. Good evening, Lynn O'Fori, 43 Boardman Terrace. I just wanted to um, thank, personally thank the council members for all, your, all of your work, but specifically for recognizing National Bike Month here in Wethersfield and for supporting and recognizing the work of Bike Walk Wethersfield, the Bike and Pedestrian Stakeholders Advisory Committee. I think the work is really important. As both a citizen who bikes for recreation, and sometimes for commuting and errands, but also as a parent of two teenagers who cycle to and from school and to the library and to rec activities when I'm at work in the afternoon, I really, really feel it's important for us to make sure our streets are safe um, for all of our citizens, but especially our children. Um, I also have two former SDMS students and one incoming, a sixth grader who will be coming in next year. So I really appreciate the um, application for the Keene Foundation grants and for the intramural programs, which my older children have taken and my younger children will. 
Thank you very much. Good evening. Thank you. I like your pin, too. <laughs> Anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Mr. Young? Good evening, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. Um, as I was talking earlier about the budget and the process, from what I, what I can see, you, you, your grand list had gone up 3.11%, yet our, our tax increased by 3.5%. Normally, under traditional reassessment years, we seem to have the assessments have been going up, dropping the mill rates. I recall no more than two months ago where Mr. Mr. Forrest had made a big uh, issue over how we were going to come in at less than $40 per mill rate because of this big drop that we were going to get. But the drop only represented $99 million in new assessed money, and you folks sucked it all right up in one year. Instead of sucking it up in two or three or four years, you did it in one year. And by doing that, what's going to happen is you're going to have another 3.5% next year because you've been spending like drunken sailors. There's no end to your spending. And it's going to be another 3.5% to 4%. Watch it. You're at 40 now. It's going to be 43, 44 the next year is going to be the same thing, 44 up to 48. And we'll be over 50 in the matter of three years, guaranteed, the way you folks spend. Now, Mr. Spinella had made a comment that something needs to be done. And he's right. He's more than once, he stepped aside from his party and, and voted the other way because he knew it was wrong what was happening. But then again, he votes, continues to vote along with his party. And he has pushed us down into the hole. And you watch, in three years, we're going to be at $50 a, a mill. And we have nobody else to blame but you folks. You don't know how to control money. Maybe you should listen to Mr. Spinella. I know Mr. Rell, who's not here, and I'm not going to talk about him because he's not here tonight, but he also agreed that night that something needs to be done. You need to hold back on your spending. How are you going to do it? You're going to stop getting leases. You're going to stop buying things. You've got to find places to cut. In the budget process on May 14th, well, when I was sitting here, it turns out that this spectacular event that we've all been waiting for called shared services ended up flopping like a fat pig on the ground. It just went boom. You had no savings at all. No savings. If this was a private company, you would have saved a lot of money. You would have lost a couple managers. You would have lost a couple of this ones and a couple of those other ones when the consolidation happened, and that would have been it. And that's the way it should have been. But we don't do that in Weathersfield, or in government for that matter. We just keep finding ways to make more noise. We're going to do more of this and more of that. And it all ends up being coming, more money coming out of the taxpayers' pockets. You know, as has been said many times from this podium by other people, we have a lot of poor people in this town. We have 34% that are what, what are they called, Alice? I don't remember what the exact, uh, uh, what, it, what the acronym means. I know it's asset, there's something about their, they don't have enough assets, but they're the working kind of people. They're hurting, and you people are crunching them. You're crunching them. Like I said earlier, my tax bill is now gonna go up X amount of dollars because of it should have come down. But because of your, your, your aggressive spending, and I call, you, I call you shifty, 
I call you a lot of bad things, and you deserve it. And you know darn well you're entitled to it when you go and run as a public servant. So you don't get any breaks. You're only politicians, and you're worthy of these words that I put out here. Some citizens may not like it. I couldn't care less. I get the tax bill. You get a tax bill too. But I get a tax bill and I'm mad as hell at these people. So don't tell me I shouldn't Your be time is to up. them Your the way that I up, talk Mr. to them. Young. So what you need to do is find some way of, of organizing, a way of cutting costs. I know now you're still working on the, the Keisha farm. Another Mr. Good, Young, your time's up. Thank way. you. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Okay. If not, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion, motion uh, carries. Thank you and good night.